Hollywood is not short of butt kicking, bullets flying, and wild goose chase filled action movies. And thanks to them, we got the biggest and baddest action heroes to swoon over. But even the most successful of the lot has one or two rotten eggs in their nest. They may not talk about it, but we do. So in this video, we're looking at the worst action movies by Hollywood's biggest action stars. To begin with, Exodus, Gods and Kings, starring Christian Bale. No offense to the others, but Christian Bale was hands down the best Batman. His performance in the trilogy will forever be remembered, but he made some poor choices after that. The 2014 Exodus Gods and Kings is one movie that sticks out like a sore thumb in Bale's impressive portfolio. What was terrible about it? Virtually everything. For starters, the all-white cast in an Egyptian movie. Adding on to that, a litany of historical inaccuracies ruined the film for watchers. Given its Jewish and biblical connection, all eyes were on it, but it failed miserably. It was so bad that it got banned in the UAE and Egypt. The director Ridley Scott was blasted everywhere for his lackluster attempt. The highly choreographed fights and politics were like water mixed with oil and the complicated symbolism just had us scratching our heads. As for the American psycho actor, he played Moses in the movie, saving the Egyptians from slavery, but he was so bland that the audience started to lean towards the Pharaoh. Joel Edgerton took all the limelight for playing Ramses II incredibly well, but Christian made Moses totally emotionless with his soulless acting. In short, Exodus Gods and Kings was one of Bale's worst nightmares. Moving on to Keanu Reeves, The Bad Batch. The Bad Batch showed us the usual suave Keanu in a new light, and we didn't like it at all. The movie also has Jason Momoa in the model turned Suki Waterhouse. Sadly, none of them speak to us most of the time. It was a lousy movie of 2017 set in a dystopian future where a fence separates the Bad Batch humans from the normal, sane folks. Suki ends up on the wrong side, chased by a cannibal alter ego of Aquaman. Then she escapes to a sex cult ruled by the Dream, our man Reeves. Twisted yet, there's more. He plays a modern age sage giving monologues about poop. Yep, you heard us right the first time. As for the action, if there was any, it was when Keanu tried to lure in Waterhouse as his latest victim. And honestly, too trippy for for us. We never understand the character's motives. Everything goes over our heads. Folks call this movie a surefire Bad Batch and other good Keanu films. Up next, Triple X Return of Xander Cage starring Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel is his usual self in Triple X, drawing words and driving motorcycles instead of cars, but the action pales significantly compared to his Fast and Furious franchise. Mix in silly scenes and the usual government turned to rogue agents shenanigans and you've got a recipe for an utterly boring movie. The shaky cameras massively took away the action leaving us unimpressed. The whole movie is just Vin's party times with his cool friends while saving the world is a bonus. We mean, there are many characters in the film contributing nothing to the plot except for a cool aesthetic. Not to mention, the movie is devoid of any character development, and Xander is just a playboy slash manchild slash super spy. Even the fans of the previous Triple X movies couldn't defend this one. After which, many wondered how, and most importantly, why Cage returned from his gruesome death to give us this. In short, the cliche spy movie trope, but with more meh. Apparently, it's good if you don't take it seriously. Following with Chris Hemsworth and Red Dawn. Whoever said so bad it's good wasn't talking talking about Red Dawn for sure. While Chris may be the mighty Thor, his lightning faded to mere sparkles in this movie. Red Dawn is a remake of the 1984 movie of the same name. Some savagely called it the mediocre version of Call of Duty, while others said it was a pointless remake. Released in 2012, this was the 2012 disaster they were talking about. The action war movie was about a Chinese, sorry, North Korean invasion of an American town. The invaders were changed to market the film in China, but that never happened. It fell on Hemsworth as an off-duty U.S. Marine and his young entourage to defend their hometown. So Josh Peck and Josh Hutchinson and pick some guns up, but drop their acting chops. Safe to say, the performances in the film were below average. Red Dawn was filled with plot holes after plot holes, making it a super flat piece. And the white supremacy and no Asians as the good guys didn't sit well with many. Ultimately, it got a 15% Rotten Tomato score and some scathing reviews. Next up is The Unnecessary The Mummy by Tom Cruise. Who on earth said we needed more of The Mummy after Brendan Fraser's blockbusters? Even his third attempt didn't go well without Rachel Wise, it should have been a great indication not to make more, but that didn't stop Tom. The Mission Impossible star wanted to reawaken the mummy world with his 2017's The Mummy. Apparently, he planned to create a new dark universe tinged with horror and undead tales, but the execution wasn't right at all. The writing was super weak, with a far-fetched plot and an outrageous twist. What's more, the unnatural imagery with gray tones was too much for us. It was brimming with special effects, and nobody wanted any more CGI and VFX. After the original Golden movies, this was a poor quality nickel. Some may call it tone deaf, using the ancient Egyptian culture as just a jump scare bait. Not cool, Cruz. That's why it bombed at the box office. Called the worst movie of 2017. Even a megastar like Tom Cruise couldn't save it from tanking. Let's look at Dwayne Johnson's doom now. Dwayne Johnson has been delivering back-to-back -back action films since he left the ring. Unfortunately, some of them bomb at the box office, and doom is one such poorly made explosive. It's somewhat of a video game adaptation that dropped in 2005, so it was before Sonic breathed the video game adaptation genre to life. Dwayne in a video game would have been a classic. Case in point, Jumanji, but 
Doom failed on so many levels. Poor lighting, too much dialogue, and too little action. Whatever fighting there was, it was super difficult to follow. And the overwhelming violence wasn't needed. Joining Johnson, we have Carl Urban and Roseman Pike in the sci-fi thriller. Even the cast failed to dazzle us with mediocre acting following a poorly written script. Critics attacked it ruthlessly, and even The Rock jokes about it now that nobody saw it. If the lead agrees it was terrible, you really don't need any other confirmation. Not to mention Mark Wahlberg and Transformers The Last Night. Transformer The Last Night was the last installment of the Transformers series and made everyone go yikes. Yes, the Transformers rage was already slowing down, but this movie brought it to a complete halt. Labeled the worst film of the franchise, it angered every single fan around the globe. Hear this, it got nominations all right, but for worst picture, worst director, and a special worst actor nomination for Mark. It had dumb characters, cringy cinematography, and weird design changes to the Transformers. And don't get us started on the plot. It was a disaster that made zero sense. What's more, the film had six editors, but apparently none of them knew what they were doing. Vanity Fair went as far as to call it a million god-awful movies crammed into one. It was just plain lazy, and we have no idea why Wahlberg even agreed to it. Finally, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Clooney's age-old Batman and Robin. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a legend in the action world, blessing us with many masterpieces. But the 1997 superhero-themed Batman and Robin ruins his record. He took over from Val Kilmer to play Mr. Freeze in the fourth and final part of the Warner Brothers Batman series. Sadly, it was utterly disappointing and counted as one of the worst films ever made. Where to begin? Joel Schumacher couldn't fill Tim Burton's directorial shoes from the previous films. Arnold's icy puns in the movie's other one-liners still make us wince. And oh, the poor, poor costumes. Yep, we're talking about the infamous bat nipples. The campy tone and a convoluted plot didn't help either. We had so many villains and their backstories to follow. Following Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl was also exhausting. And how can we not talk about George Clooney as Batman? According to the critics, if Bale was the best, he was the worst. The suit made it so difficult to move him, and his phony acting convinced no one. Not even him. Surprisingly, Schwarzenegger doesn't regret his role at all, saying the character was interesting and the decision making wasn't that far off. It just tanked. But you should see Clooney talking about what a mess it was. Nobody probably hates it more than him, and that speaks volumes of the movie's quality. And that's a wrap. Did we miss any cringeworthy action movies? Tell us in the comments and let us know which one of them is the worst in your opinion. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share the video. Hit subscribe for more content like this. See you in the next one.